Hello freaky friends, it's just your friendly neighborhood horror writer, Tia. The summer of 2017 has really tried its best to challenge me in many, many different ways. And frankly, I just couldn't find the time, the energy, and sometimes just the willpower to be able to do a vlog. I've any kind of extra energy that I had or extra time I dedicated strictly to the audiobook which my goal is to have it done by the end of summer. Unfortunately some things have gotten into the way of my grand scheme and I'm a little behind, but not too behind, but I'm about a month and a half behind where I want to be and it is fucking killing me. It really is bothering me. But let me kind of go over what's happened this summer and uh, maybe you can cut me some slack because I'm still being very hard on myself. I'm just that type of person that if I don't reach my goals for whatever reason I just get so frustrated and angry with myself that I, I'm really hard on myself about getting things done. You can probably see in the back. One of the first things that happens uh, right after Liberty Con, I think I believe that was my last blog post, was we came home and a storm had hit our neighborhood pretty uh, badly, but not too badly. A lot of the trees, the old growth trees that we have in our neighborhood um, came down. And in fact, that tree right there has moved 30 degrees and I shouldn't be sitting under it, but we're going to be removing it this week. So I want to enjoy the, the shade. And one of the things I love about this house so much is the, the trees. But when we came back from Liberty Con, our yard was pretty tore up. As you can see, we have a lot of growth in the back where branches have fallen and they're just too big. And it's taken th us this long to be able to get a tree service because they were just that far behind. And uh, that was two months ago, something like that. And we still have to wait another three weeks before they can come out and finish the job and get everything out. And unfortunately, our fence came down um, and we had to take that down and put up a temporary fence and we haven't been able to take care of the backyard as well because just a lot of shit in the way and we try to mow where we can but we have a little bit of a jungle happening today but that's okay you know um, that was one of the first things that happened but we've been trying to work on that and um, Shad my boyfriend he has been severely busy at work and you know trying to get everything situated and the tree services are just fucking overwhelmed with the amount of trees that came down during the last couple of storms and since we're not really an emergency we're just playing the waiting game which is fine it's fine you know I was like okay fine fuck it you know I can still work on my stuff I can still focus on the raw recordings for my audiobook and then, you know, do the cleanup and the editing and, and then work on the cover photo for the, the second edition for The Lesser Devil and the, the audiobook, which is being recorded as a second edition. No big deal. I can continue. I got this. A little bit after that, uh, my stepfather, Roy, who has been my stepfather for... 18 years, 19 years, passed away somewhat suddenly. We knew he was ill, but it was like he was ill and then he got better and then the worst. So I had to make sure that my son and my family were taken care of. There was a memorial and a lot of that was stuff that I had to get involved in. And again, my writing my audiobook and my plans for the summer took a back seat. And it was, it was quite difficult, you know. 
he was a good man, but it was very hard on my son, and that's what hurt me, seeing my son and my mom go through it. But again, okay. I'm running a little behind, but that's okay. Family comes first. All these things keep happening, and it's like little things that keep going wrong. We had to uh, bug bomb the house because because of the weather and the rain and, the, and just, you know, the, so much wet. The ants were coming into our house when I had to bug bomb the house, and that takes a week of doing. And after that, I had a trip that I had been planning for six, seven months to go see one of my close friends in Houston, Texas. See where I'm going with this? I went out to Houston, Texas on the 23rd. And when I was on the plane, and mind you, I am terrified of planes, I got on the plane and I did it because I, I, you know, of course I wanted to see my friend, of course, because I hadn't seen them in years. But, you know, I was feeling a little stagnant, a little frustrated, and, and my birthday happened, and that's a whole thing. Um, so I was feeling very stagnant, and I needed just to get out and just fucking breathe, you know? And I was going to go without Shad, which is very unusual. I don't really travel without him, but I, I just, I needed this thing. I needed adventure is what I was asking for. I wanted some adventure. So I flew out on the 23rd thinking that there was only a thunderstorm out in the Gulf. And that's what everybody else thought. Oh, it's just a thunderstorm. Oh, if it's just a hurricane, it's going to blow in, blow out. I'm a Floridian girl originally. I have been through some hurricanes in my lifetime. I'm not really too worried about them generally. Uh, you know, they come in, they do what they need to do. You hunker down, you know, drink a little bit, you know, chuck some shit into the tornadoes, you know, that kind of thing. I'm a Southern Floridian girl. That's what we do. By the time I really got settled in Houston, maybe that later on that night or Thursday morning, the Hurricane Harvey turned into a hurricane and uh, it was looking to cause some damage. That's okay, you know, that's fine. Hunker down, drink a little bit, chuck shit into the tornadoes, not a big deal. And my friend has a uh, hurricane experience too, so Woo! Whatever. And then Harvey came in and just fucking sat there and sat there and fucking sat there. I was really lucky and I get kind of emotional talking about it still because I feel, I don't think survivor's guilt is quite the word, but I do feel something about being there. And we were very lucky. The hotel we were staying at was an island. It had a, it had a uh, 30 foot, 25 foot drop off next to the hotel. And when the water started coming in, the drop off came even with the parking lot. And I believe that is what kept us from, you know, being washed out of the hotel. And there was, you know, the currents were coming in, the water was coming in, and it, and it has been a while since I've seen a hurricane linger like that. And the water was there, and I was watching the reports, and I was hearing the helicopters going back and forth and the emergency vehicles trying to make it through. And I have to admit, sitting up in this hotel room with a friend, safe with internet and hot water and good plumbing and uh, seeing all these stories of families dying, entire families dying 
not that far from where we were. I was extremely lucky and I'm very, very thankful. I was in the right place at the wrong time and uh, we weathered it out and I got to hang out with my friend. I even got more time with my friend because originally it was only supposed to be four days and I say there are 10 days and the most we got was a leak in our room. But that has had a very profound effect on me. I've only been home, I've been home less than a week now from Hurricane Harvey. And I still got some feelings going on. And of course, book inspiration. <laughs> but being so close and not being able to help. I didn't even have the right fucking shoes. I packed for a weekend trip and I was going to go to V&V Nation concert and I got fucking heels and fishnet and shit and, and you know, you're on a plane, you can't take your pocket knife because I'm always, I always have a pocket knife on me because I'm a southern girl. We always got shit on us. And I was not able to help or be useful of any sort and the hotel just started melting under so much water but I'm very thankful I'm not Christian or anything like that, but I, I am pagan and my prayers go out to those families who didn't make it and to those families that are struggling to get back on their feet. And now Hurricane Irma is on her way to hit Florida. And I have a lot of friends in Florida and that's where I'm from originally is Florida, Naples, Florida to be specific. And I'm watching that beast of a fucking storm coming in. And again, all my pagan prayers <laughs> go out to you. And I hope that you're okay. All of you in the islands and the keys and all those people and that culture and Florida and, and everything. I just sincerely good luck and I hope the gods, whatever gods you worship keep you safe. Keep your family safe. But on that note we wipe away the tears I am, you know, I got a little funk going on with me. But what do I do when I'm overwhelmed with emotion is I let myself wallow for a couple of days. Like I, I allow myself one or two days of just wallow. So I sat my happy ass on that couch. So I sat my ass on that couch and I just let all of this just kind of wallow. And today is the day that I got up, put some fucking makeup on, and I'm starting to, to kind of wrap my head around everything, and I'm gonna get back to work, because that's what I do. I like working, and working is my therapy. So my audiobook is still happening, it's just about a month and a half behind. 
I was hoping I would have been done by now, at least with the raw recordings and starting on the editing process, but that's just not in the cards. And for fuck's sake, I still feel like I'm that audiobook is cursed. I mean, a goddamn send a fucking hurricane. Jeez. But the audiobook will get done when it gets done. It won't be on my timetable. It's just going to be what it's going to be. And I'm going to have to accept that. I think it is completely possible for me to get the raw audio done before October 1st. Which was the original plan of when all the editing and the processing and the uploading was supposed to happen. But I don't know if that's possible. But it is what it is. And that's okay. I am okay. My friend is okay. My friends in Florida. Oh, you know, keep praying for them. But I hope all of y'all, no matter where you watch this, I hope that you remain safe, take care of you and yours, and uh, keep your eye on your goals. They may not come as quick as you'd like, but with effort and stamina and a fucking willpower, you can make it happen. Till next time, may the night protect you as you protect the night. Good luck to all my friends and family and to all the people of the islands and Florida my prayers are with you. May the gods protect you and watch over you, no matter who you believe and what you believe. Even if you don't believe in anything, 